Right, now what I have in front of me is the uh, painting that I sent you that we will be working on, this one here of Leslie Worth's. Um, on reflection, I, following on from the pieces of work that were sent to me and your comments, I felt that we all could benefit from doing a little bit more um, focus on A, mixing colour and glazing and also the wet and to wet techniques. So I know one or two of you are pretty good at it already, so I hope you won't mind. But I think the subtlety of the colour mixes is also something that we can all benefit from going over in preparation for this, looking at this painting. Um, the painting itself, I think we will probably won't get round to actually working on till next Friday. Uh, because in the latter part of this session, we're going to have a, a review of everybody's work that has been sent in and just share what each of us have done. We're all obviously at different stages in terms of our practice and our skill, and that really doesn't matter. I think we all of us will take from it something, and that, that's the beauty of, of actually sharing this. Um, in a school situation, it will be exactly the same. You have a mixed ability of group in just about every class you come to. Uh, some you know, more able than others, some more focused than others. Um, many reasons for why the results or the achievements vary. Anyway, uh, I hope that following from the email I sent you yesterday, that you all of you will have squared up your piece of paper. Now this, um, sheet here with these little examples I did with Chris yesterday who wanted a bit more individual practice and tuition and the day before I did this with my sister. Um, it, in both cases it was a really useful thing to have done because it it showed a lot of things well, as exercises do. Um, on this sheet that I did with my sister, this, this was just one wash of Prussian blue and then I was exploring using just Prussian blue but I didn't feel it was the right colour for his painting. I felt that his, the blue in his painting, certainly as it gets down towards the horizon, has got quite a lot of red in it and it's veering more towards something you might achieve with using ultramarine. Anyway, we were determined that we would um, manage to mix these colours without changing what we decided to use. So um, all these were done with Prussian blue, uh, the raw sienna, and actually yellow ochre in fact, and that was it, and a little bit of alizarin crimson. Um, this little square rectangle here is, I think, a good example of wet into wet. The remaining um, little exercises are where the colours have been overlaid on top of each other to create further colours. Um, I would also point out that it is quite important, and this is what we're going to spend a little time on today, I'm going back to this sheet, um, getting the value of the two colours, i.e. their darkness or lightness, as, as similar as we can make them. Because if the blue is too much too strong in relationship to the strength of the brownie colour here it doesn't work so well so um, anyway we'll go straight into the colour mixing now I'm going to remove this one and underneath here I've got my new um, sheet with all the little rectangles marked out now is there anybody that hasn't done that Oh, I'll just check. Sorry. No, everybody's done it. That's lovely. Well done, everybody. That's fantastic. Um, right. So I think what we'll start with, first of all, is getting our palette in front of us. I hope you can all see mine. Uh, first of all, let's start by making the... I think we'll start with the, the brownie colour, this one here. Okay, can you all see it? Now if you've got Leslie Worth's 
painting printed out, I reckon that this was a pretty good equivalent of that pinky brown that, sorry, can you see it? Pinky brown that he's got in the sky. Mm. Yeah? Yeah. Not yeah. too bad. Mm. So, the way I achieved it was this. And I will go slowly. And you need to have a piece of paper like I have on which you can just check out your colours. And it'd be nice <coughs> to do it without having to do hundreds of versions. So, um, if you just listen carefully. First of all, I'm going to start with the yellow, whether it's yellow ochre or raw sienna, I'll leave it to you to decide. You need to first stroke that yellow to make sure that the yellow pigment has released with the water that we put into that little well at the beginning. You just stroke it and as you stroke it, the color releases and it should get sort of, um, well, it gets like single cream really, doesn't it? Then transfer that by filling, letting your brush head roll in that wet colour and transfer it over to where you would like to have the colour. So I'm going to do it in this square here. Make sure you get all that yellow out of your brush. Now another thing, I don't know what I've told you, but you can squeeze the colour out so we don't waste anything. And then dry your fingers. Now I'm going to have a designated pot for each of my uh, washes. So the, this one here is going to be for when I wash my brush from the yellows. So that's my yellow pot. I'm now going to go to the red. So the alizarin crimson, same thing, just stroke it. With this one you don't need very much because it's a really strong uh, pigment. So um, I would suggest not too much, like, you know, uh, empty your brush once you've actually mixed the colour around. And probably what you've got in there will be enough to um, work with the yellow ochre that we put in there. So I've just scraped out what the red in my brush into that palette. Can you all see it there? Yeah. Then wash the brush again thoroughly check there's no red left in it on a paper towel and go over to the Prussian blue and do the same with that. So stroke it so the colour releases. Again, you do not need much of this. So rather than rolling the brush head in it, just pick up a little on the end of your brush and then put transfer that in with the yellow and red and then you can mix it round. <coughs> Any questions yet? Mine looks green. Well if it looks green then you need a little bit more alizarin crimson because you're working towards something that's slightly pinky. So Could you remember repeat what you've just done? Can I repeat what I've just done? Yes, with that with that colour. What did you do there? I took first of all yellow ochre. Yes, but then then I took a little alizarin crimson, little little alizarin crimson, and then a little Prussian blue. You put now, it all I know, together. Uh, sorry, sorry, Chris. All together. Yes, and then you can put it all together. You mix it all together in this this space here. Do we paint a sample on our scrap piece of paper? No, because just looking at it, looking at mine, I would say I can tell it's not quite pink enough. Anita's said hers looks green, so her, I know definitely hers hasn't got enough red in it. Mine has probably got a fraction too much of the blue in it, so it's making it more, it's going towards more of a, a brownie caramel colour. I don't want that, so I'm going to empty my brush, wash it out, and then take a little tiny bit of the red. Be careful when you put your brush into the red, you don't pick up too much. It's just the tip, really. And add that to it. Mine's now a grey colour. Grey. 
grey. So what colour do I add to it now? Have you put alizarin crimson in it? I did, yes. Maybe so I didn't paint it on the paper, it looked not right, but I looked in the colour, I, I didn't try it on anything. No, I, I haven't tried it on anything either. Right. Okay, um, I would I put some more, a little, tiny bit more alizarin crimson in it and a bit more yellow ochre. Oh. So what colour are we trying to get? The one that I mentioned at the beginning, this one here, which is the colour that Leslie Worth has used in the sky, not the blue, the brownie colour, this one here. Well, absolutely nothing like it at all. Right, let me get it back. Right, there we are. Oh dear. Oh, mine's gone too red now. Mine's green. Well, if it's green, it's got too much blue in it. So you need to put some more red and some more yellow ochre in it, but just be careful about the quantities. Refer to, if you have got his painting at hand, refer to the painting of his because that's the best way to see it. It's much more difficult looking at you know, through the screen and trying to judge mine to a certain extent. I think if you can put your sample over his, you'll get a better idea of what it looks like. Now, I'm going to, I'm, having said do a sample, I'm going to paint this colour on here and I can already see what I've got is too dark, too strong. Too strong and too hot. Too red, you mean? Too red, yes, too red. Needs a touch more blue in it and it needs to be paler. So I need to add water to it and I need to put more, um, a tiny bit more blue in it. Right. 